The SMS Retriever API for Android lets you verify your user's phone number ownership without making them deal with typing verification codes. By using the API, your app can automatically retrieve verification codes without having to request full SMS reading permissions. It really takes the friction out of handling verification. Did I type the right phone number? Did I type the right verification code? Do I have to give permissions correctly? All of these kind of things. And using the API makes for a much better user experience. I'm Lawrence Moroni, and in this video, I'll show you how you can use this API in your apps. Before you begin, you'll need an Android device with a phone number, and this Android device has to run Google Play Services 10.2x or higher. OK, once you have this, the first step is the user will initiate SMS verification from within your app. Your app might prompt the user to enter a phone number, or you could use the Smart Lock Hint Selector. Here's the code for the hint selector. It uses the hint request builder, telling it that it wants to use a phone number identifier. And then this is used to create and start an intent. Then, in your on activity result within the credential, you'll have the phone number as a string. And here's the code for that. Next up, you'll be getting an instance of the SMS retriever client object, so you can start listening for an incoming SMS. This will stay alive for up to five minutes waiting for that incoming message. And the message needs to contain a unique string that identifies your app. When your server sends the message, it will use the same string. You'll see that step in a moment, but first let's take a look at how to listen for the SMS. As you can see, it's pretty simple. You get an SMS retriever client, and then you start a task for it. The task has an unsuccess listener as well as an unfailure one. You just simply override these. At this point, you would send the user's phone number to your server, and that would start its workflow for generating the message that it will SMS to that number. The message needs to be constructed in a very specific way. First of all, it can't be longer than 140 bytes, and it does need to start with a well-defined header. See the documentation for your options on building that header here. It must also end with an 11-character hash that identifies your app. We'll see that in a moment. The one-time code can be anything you want as long as it's unguessable. The easiest way to do this is to simply generate a random number or a string comprised of random numbers and characters. The hash string ending the message does have to be deterministic, though. On the client, Google Play Services will use this string to determine which app the verification message is intended for. There are explicit steps on how you can build this, and you can find them at this URL. Your server will then send the message to the phone using SMS. And when the message is received, Google Play Services broadcasts an intent which contains the text of that message. In your app, you'll need a broadcast receiver to receive this. Let's take a look at the code for that receiver. And here it is. In the on receive of the broadcast receiver, you're able to get the extras and pull the status from there. If the status indicates that the message was successfully received, you can then pull the message from the extras. From here, you can parse out the verification code and send it back to your server to verify that it was received and thus verify your phone. And that's it. To learn more about this API, including how to save the phone number back to SmartLock, check out the SMS Retriever documentation on the Google Developer site. Also, check out our YouTube channel for more great videos about Android development. And while you're there, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.